In this video, I'll be starting our discussion about copyright and open education by looking at attribution and fair use. But as always, let's start with the basics. Open Educational Resources, or OER, are openly licensed, which means they're available under a copyright license that enables their reuse, redistribution, and often their adaptation. The most popular of these open licenses are Creative Commons licenses, customizable licenses that you can attach to a work to show users what they're allowed to do with it. Whenever you use a Creative Commons licensed work, or if you get permission to use a traditionally copyrighted work, you usually need to provide attribution. This process is similar to, but not exactly the same as, providing a citation for a work you quote in a paper. Attribution and citation are both forms of giving credit to the creator of a work, but the requirements and why they're required are a little different. For example, you're not legally required to cite a quotation you put in a paper, but you are legally required to provide attribution for copyrighted content that you share or adapt. In some cases, like the screenshot I have here, a work will include an example attribution style you can follow, but there are rules of thumb for providing attribution if there's no model text available to you as well. Most of the time, an attribution should include the item's title, its author, its license information, and its source. You can remember this with the acronym TALES. But what do you do if you don't have permission to use a copyrighted work, either through an open license or communication with the copyright holder? That's when we turn to fair use. Fair use is an exemption in copyright law that permits the unlicensed use of copyright-protected works in certain circumstances. The operative language here is in certain circumstances. When you want to use a copyrighted work under fair use, there are four factors you need to keep in mind. These factors include the purpose of your use, the nature of the work itself, the amount of the work you want to use, and the effect of your use on the work. If you think the good outweighs the bad among these four factors, document your reasoning, and if you're unsure, talk to your university's legal counsel or other legal support for help. But even if your use falls under fair use, that doesn't make the item you're using open, and including copyrighted content in an open textbook under fair use can be tricky. This is because an open textbook is easily and freely accessible to anyone online at any time. That makes it a lot harder for you to argue that your use will have no effect on the original work. That doesn't mean that you can't use fair use for including copyrighted content in your open content, but it does mean you need to be more careful and aware of the open options available to you as well. For more support on this topic, check out the Code of Best Practices and Fair Use for Open Courseware linked in the description. So we've had an overview on attribution and gone over how fair use can be a little tricky, but you do have other options for using copyrighted materials in your class. If the content you want to use is already freely available online, you can also choose to link out to it. Linking can be beneficial because you're not taking away from the copyright owner's intended use of the work or changing the ways they chose to present it. And that's a great way to integrate resources in your class without having to worry about copyright restrictions. Today, we've covered a lot of ground when it comes to copyright and open education. We talked about attribution, how it's both like and not like citations, and the best practices for what to include in your attribution. We talked about fair use, its intricacies, and how it can be applied in open contexts. And we briefly covered an alternate option for sharing copyrighted content, linking. Thanks for watching. Copyright can be confusing, so if you get overwhelmed, talk to a lawyer, your local copyright office on campus, or a copyright librarian near you.